When I covered Spaceballs, I figured that was the one and only movie from Mel Brooks that I'd cover. That's because Spaceballs was one of the most famous parodies of Star Wars. The movie I'm covering today is a parody of Western films and also a parody of the history of the West. I was requested to review the movie. I may have watched the movie on my own at a later date, but as soon as I got the request, I watched the movie. I'm not really a fan of westerns. Something about the open desert and cowboys and stuff really just didn't do it for me. I don't know what it is exactly. I like the Red Dead Redemption games. Maybe that's the only western stuff that I enjoy. Ever. I was disconnected heavily from western kids movies like Rango for example when I was younger. I saw that movie in theaters back when it came out and I thought it was eh. I think the only one that did it effectively was Spongebob, but that was intercut with the present day. I guess I'm saying that there has to be a different genre I like, sprinkled in most of the time for me to find enjoyment. So I'm probably not going to get any references, okay? I'm still going to try and judge the movie to the best of my ability, even though I don't particularly enjoy westerns. Since I was automatically disconnected, with it taking place in the desert with cowboys and whatnot, I'd have to say that my watching experience was alright actually. This movie stars Cleveland Little as a dude named Bart, an African American living in the West. Given the freedom given to all slaves at the end of the Civil War, the movie starts with Bart, along with other African Americans and Asians, working on a railway. You'll notice right off the bat that this movie is extremely politically incorrect. This is peak offensive for anyone who doesn't understand the satire. The N word is used often, that Asian slur that starts with C is used once or twice, and the homophobic F word is used at two points based on my memory. And they throw it right at you as the movie starts. It's used so often that I can even imagine that this movie was offensive even when it first came out. Like imagine any black or Asian person walking in to watch this movie not knowing any better. It would be a nightmare. We see that Bart is a poorly paid, mistreated dude by the white settlers in the West. Bart always acts humble and with a smile on his face though, even if he's being given the n-word. He seems mostly oblivious to the fact that the white settlers openly despise him. The gags in this movie aren't exactly to my taste, but I didn't find them bad either. Believe me, there's a difference between a comedy where you don't get the jokes and a bad one. Watching this movie was tolerable. Some gags gave me a small chuckle. Gags at the start include a joke about former slaves singing like birds, in which the white settlers and their workers have a sing-off. This movie often makes light of the controversial subject manner of the Wild West. There's also a gag where Bart and another worker get stuck in quicksand, and all their employers care about is retrieving the cart. The quicksand is actually a plot point, as a territorial attorney general named Hedley Lamar, who also has his first name misspoken constantly by other characters. After learning of the quicksand, he decides to build a railway through the town of Rock Ridge, and he's going to get the townspeople to leave. So he sends a group of thugs to rampage through the town, and they end up killing the sheriff. Well, unfortunately for Headley, the townspeople don't end up leaving and demand a new sheriff. Unaware that he was behind the attack, Headley comes up with a backup plan to appoint the sheriff to someone who the townspeople will not stand. And who better to fill that role than an African American? Yeah, I warned you this movie was pretty offensive. We see all of this through a scene where the character Mel Brooks plays, the governor. Like in Spaceballs, Mel Brooks in this movie also has a bitch of his own, that being his secretary, who he later messes around with. Bart, who is about to be hung on a lineup by a stupid executioner, is appointed as the sheriff. At first the townspeople are excited to get a new sheriff, and then after they learn it's a black man, they go deadpan. It's that kind of gag, I hope you know what I'm talking about. To be honest, as I said, my watching experience was alright. I suppose certain prejudice gags were my favourite. For example, when Bart says that he's going to pull something out of his pants, everyone briefly panics because stereotypes about black people in the West, until it turns out that he's just grabbing a note from there. It's here where Bart enters the sheriff's office and meets the secondary lead, Jim, played by Gene Wilder, who I only recognise elsewhere as Willy Wonka, of course. 
I'm not really one to watch older movies. The furthest I can go back sometimes is certain movies from the late 1960s. Believe me, I tried watching the 1930s Scarface, and given it was such an old movie, I didn't have a good time. It kinda has to be a movie from the 80s, for me to judge it somewhat fairly, I suppose. So the movie has Bart refused to quit despite being constantly disrespected by the townspeople. I hear a common trait of this film is to unapologetically poke fun at prejudice and racism in that regard, I say that the movie did its job damn well. There's so many gags related to stereotypes and discrimination and whatnot. I suppose one of my favorite offensive-ish gags in a movie is That's a cute outfit. Did your husband give it to you? There are a couple of lines in this movie that are quite like that. Such as when Jim and Bart attract two KKK members and Bart is like Hey, where are the white women at? Which is so funny yet so wrong. I got the joke fully. I know there was a silent film from 1915 called The Birth of a Nation, which portrayed the Ku Klux Klan as heroes, saving white people, particularly women from dumb and ugly black people, who were played by people in blackface. That movie I hear was revolutionary for several filmmaking techniques, and the fact that it was feature length. I also hear that it's the number one most banned film in the United States. Bottom line, this movie has a lot of gags, which while they don't make me laugh personally, they made me go, oh, ha, ha, ha. that's offensive but clever. So anyways, the movie is basically Headley trying to figure out a way to get the townspeople out, and to get rid of Bart, the dude he put into the sheriff's position to begin with. He starts by sending a brute, whom Bart outwits and arrests by having an explosive blow in his face, which knocks him out. Next he gets a German woman to seduce Bart, and then ditch him to break his heart or whatever. Well turns out Bart is a nice guy in the sense that he isn't a creep, and he leaves for work the next day. So that fails, as the tables were turned, and the German woman fell in love with him, not the other way around. It's through the brute from earlier that Bart and Jim learn that Headley is behind everything. So this is where the climax comes into effect. Headley recruits the worst people to attack Rock Ridge and destroy it. Well, Bart comes up with an idea to literally build a fake replica of Rock Ridge as a distraction with dynamite placed everywhere, in which they will ambush their ambush. Then the movie goes totally off the rails as it literally breaks the fourth wall with another director in the Warner Brothers studio shooting his scene, only for the Blazing Saddles cast to come in and ruin his film. The director is actually played by Dom Deleuze, who was of course the voice of Pizza the Hut. Headley goes into a theatre to watch Blazing Saddles to see where Bart is. Upon realising that he is nearby, he walks outside only to be shot and defeated. Then Jim and Bart go in to see if there's a happy ending. The movie basically ends with Bart and Jim watching themselves as Bart quits his position and rides off with Jim before being driven off by a car. That's Blazing Saddles. Again, I want to stress this. This movie isn't for me. The comedy style that it goes for is great for that specific style, but it wasn't really for someone like me. There's a lot of similarities between it and Spaceballs, but maybe I just preferred Star Wars references rather than that of Western movie ones. I'd describe this movie as great satire that pokes fun at controversial subject matter and it does it unapologetically. If you can't handle it, don't watch it. Mel Brooks is here to make you laugh and that's the end to it. I give Blazing Saddles an 8 out of 10. I think that's probably the score I'd give if I was more accustomed to westerns and old movies alike. With that being said, that's my request video. I'm JJ Plagiarisms, and until next time, what are stories but mystery boxes? Under the mountain.